Um, hi, today we're going to talk about um, variable selection. Um, so um, this is a lab section from a book called uh, An Introduction to Statistical Learning with Application in R. So uh, note the reference that um, all the codes and the comments are below to the book and author. And then I will have the reference in the description. So that um, this is a very good book, so I really recommend if you are very interested in machine learning and statistics, I really recommend this book to you. So um, now we're going to work, uh, we're going to use um, the, the regression subset function in R here. So first of all, we're going to, use, to load the library. And then since um, there's uh, an A in the original data, so we have to omit all the an A's. And then we apply the function and then we're going to call a summary. And then we can see that uh, in this summary, we have, um, for all the measures, we have, um, this is uh, R squared, and then a uh, residual sum of square. And then here we also have uh, the just uh, sum of square, and then there's the other, there's another two called CP and BIC. So uh, basically, we're going to use these measure to, um, to select the best variable that we want to fit on our data set. Um, the number here, 19, means um, we're going to include all the 19 variables uh, from our data set to the, um, to the regression. Uh, we can see that um, for this data set, we have uh, 20 variables, and one of them is Y. So there will be 19 uh, independent variables. So we are going to include all the 19 variables in our data, in, in the regression function. So now let's see that um, for uh, for R square, we can see that um, when we include about more than ten variables, we reach almost the highest um, R square we can get for uh, fifty five percent. So we will probably in, for R square, we'll probably use ten or eleven uh, variables for uh, for this measure. And also for regress, uh, for residual sum of square, which we want to minimize it, so we can see that actually um, the the more variable you include, the lower the lower the sum uh, the residual sum of square. So probably I would say like if we include about ten will be enough. Uh, when while we want to have the lowest uh, residual sum of square, as well as we try to use as uh, like um, the less variable we want to include in the model. So I would say like 10 or maybe f uh, 5 or in this range, we can see that there's a big drop until f uh, 5 variables. So I would say like uh, 5 or 10 will be a good choice for the number of vari uh, variable. And also we can see that for the justice R square, we can see that um, the maximum, so now we're, we want the highest R square, so um, 11 variables will has the highest R square, and then we can also make a plot for this. We can see that um, <clears throat> the 11 has the highest R square. Also the same for the CP, we want to minimize it, so we can see that um, the lowest CP is at number 10 when you include 10 variables in in your regression. So we can see that um, here you have the lowest CP. And also for BIC, we also want to minimize it. We have six. So for BIC, for this measure, uh, when we include six variables, we have we has the we have the best model. So we can see that um, here we have the minim, uh, the the lowest BIC at uh, when we include six variables. So now we are going to see um, for each measure uh, what are the variables that included. So we can see that when we want the highest R, when we want the highest R score, we can see that actually all variables are included. So this doesn't, uh, so it doesn't actually help. But we can see that uh, there are a couple fifty-five percent. So for the last fifty-five percent, we have um, we have um, these four variables, and then walks, 
and then this one. So all the black cubes uh, means that 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 specific variables are uh, is included in in our model. So if we read through this line, and then we can see what are the variables included in when we are using uh, R score as our measure to select the best model. And the same for the, uh, the justice R square, we want the highest, and then probably 52 from here, and then we have all these variables um, um, for the justice R square to include it in our model. And for the CP, we want the lowest one. So here we have uh, one, two variables, third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine variables uh, included when we use CP as a measure to, to select our variables. And for BIC, we have uh, we also want to minimize it. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six variables. Also, we can see uh, what are the coefficients when we run for the, the default here um, is uh, BIC. So that when we look at the best model for um, So for the BIC, which is uh, when for, for BIC we included um, six variables here. So when we look for the coefficient, we include six variables. So here are the six variables. Let me plot make the plot again. We can see um, at the back here we have um, this is the coefficient, and then the second variable hits. We have uh, the coefficient walks, and then the same here. We have all six uh, variables included. We have the minimized BIC, and all the coefficients are here. Um, so um, in this function, we can also perform a forward stepwise selection and also backward stepwise selection. So um, the com the function is basically the same, but when but only. Uh, you have to define your method, which is forward or backward, and the result is also the same. Um, this one is uh, the general summary, but if it is too, it's, it can be complicated to read when you have uh, more variables, so we can actually make the plot as the same as above. And then here we want to use um, CP as our measure to filter the variables. So we can see that when we have the lowest CP, this line is the variables that we want to include, and let's see what is what are the coefficient for um, for the for the CP when we use a forward selection. So we have um, these are the coefficients. The same for the backward selection, we use CP, and then we can see we have one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten variables included in this in backward selection, and we can see that um, these are the ten coefficient for the backward selection. So basically, for the forward selection, um, uh, basically what we're doing here is that we include an empty model, and then each time we add one variable at each time, and then we want to see. Um, and then we use the CP or uh, diff we can use different measures to see. Um, um, what are the, what is the best number of variables that we want to include in our variables? And for the backward, basically, uh, first of all, we include all the variables. Here we have all nineteen variables included in the in the function. Then we remove one at a time, and then we we see um, what are the numbers of variables that we want to include that we can uh, minimize by um, CP here. So uh, eventually. Based on the backward selection, we we uh, we choose to use ten of the variables here. You can also use um different uh, different measure here, so uh, you can try it later by yourself. And here uh, we're going to introduce um the um the validation uh, set approach, and then we also have the cross validation. So here uh, for the validation set pro uh, approach, basically we need to um separate the data by our uh, with uh, with two uh, two parts one is the train and one is the test um, test data and then we use the same uh, function here and then we only do it on the train data set and here we're going to create a model matrix for the test and then we are going to 
to um, to run um, uh, all the models where we have when we included one variable all the way to when we included all 19 variables. So we run a for loop, and then we can see that um, when we this is when we include the first uh, only one variables. Here is our error, uh, error, and then when we include this two variables in our data, and then we can see that there's a drop in the error rate. And then as we keep on adding, and then we can see that um, it started to decrease, and then it started to get stable by about I would say this is about eleven or ten. Oh, uh, we actually have a lowest at ten. So so for this uh, validation set approach, we will include it uh, ten. Actually, we can see that uh, uh, the tenth when we include ten variables, uh, we have the lowest um, the error rate. And then we can see that here, this is these are the coefficient for these ten variables we included in our uh, in our model. So um, here we um, for the cross validation. So basically, we have uh, ten. We divided our data into ten parts, and then each time we use uh, nine of the ten uh, fraction to as our train data set and then we use the 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 la, uh, the tenth um the tenth uh, fraction of the data as our test data and then we use the model to predict to predict the test and then we check uh and then we we calculate the error and then and then um we going to do the same thing for all the for from when we include the first variable all the way to when we include all 19 variables. So here we define our um, k equal to 10, and then this is how we're going to sample the data. And then we create an empty, mat empty ma matrix for, uh, to, 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 to um, record the um, error. And then we're going to run the for loop, which uh, we run for, for each uh, one tenth of the fraction of the data, and then we're going to run the model. And then, for each for each fraction for each fraction of the data, we are going to include um, our one more variables at uh, each of the time. So we're going to run the for. Uh, unfortunately, we can see that um, there's an error here. The reason is that um, for this uh, regre uh, regression subset function, um, there isn't a, actually there isn't a predict function for this uh, for this function that's that's then so that's why we have to write our own uh, prediction predict function uh, let me uh, just know that um, every code is from all the codes uh, and the comments are from the books so uh, just remember uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't write the code so uh, please check the book for reference and uh, so now we write our own predict function, and then we can apply the for loop again. It might take a while because we have 19 variables, and then we are going to run uh, 10 times since we divided the data into in, into 10 parts. Um, so now we are going to take the mean for all the uh, for all the um, error. We can actually see uh, this for the error here this is a 10 by or a 19 by 10 ma uh, ma matrix and then we're going to take the mean for each uh, variables and then we can see that here uh, for each 19 variables when we include from the first when we include the two variables third variable all the way to all, all the variables and then we can see that these are the error rates and we can see that probably or 11 or we can see um, uh, we can see that actually 10th or 11 has the lowest um, error rate so 11 so we so for this uh, function we are going to include all uh, we are only going to include um, 11 variables so here we run the models again and then we're going to check see the coefficient when we include all 11 variables 
So here are all the variables that we included in our models. Um, so it should be 11. Um, seven, four variables, so, yeah, 11 variables. And then we have the uh, coefficient for all the variables. So, um, so basically we just cover how to um, do the best subsets so, or variable selections using different method. Uh, for example, we have a different measure whether we want to maximize the R square or minimize the BIC, uh, we can so based on the measure you choose, and then using this function you can see um, how, how many how many variables you want to include, and also this function can show you the coefficient, and then you can also use the backward uh, forward and backward stepwise selection method for uh, each of the measure of your choice and then see the coefficient and then you can also use the validation set approach just to uh, increase uh, your accuracy or to um, to avoid any error and then you have all you, can, you also have uh, cross you can also use cross validation to improve your uh, precision uh, to improve your accuracy so uh, just remember uh, all the codes are from this from the book um, introduction to statistical learning uh, application R. Uh, this is a very good book, so I really in, uh, recommend you to uh, to read the books. And personally, I have read the books many times, and I have been I have keep reading this book each time when we when I make the video or when I when I uh, when I'm working on the data. So uh, thank you very much, and let me know if you have any uh, question, and then I can. Uh, I will make a, a, another video for you, and um, the video will be included in the. And I have another series called a video response. So uh, let me know if you have any question or comments. Uh, feel free to uh, to uh, to message. Thanks.